Hello, hello. All right, everybody. Sorry about that. I had a... I had a... quick... camera, or not camera, I had a quick phone call. Let me check that music, make sure it's okay. Okay. I'll turn that down a little bit more and we'll get started here. Great to see a lot of you guys here. Tony Escobar, great to see you here finally for a actual live show again. We're here all together. Ray Cerrone, good to see you. Matt D, always great to see you too. Adventure Taco, thank you for showing up today. Shadow Mask, hey, how you doing, buddy? Who else we got here? All right. Anyway, today I just wanted to follow up. Let me get the screen readjusted. There we go. I'm going to do a little bit of following up on the uh, latest production, which was the Toshiba AF24 or 24AF45. And uh, so we'll talk about that some today. Hey, Belmont. I was hoping you'd be able to make it. I saw where you had uh, got rained out. So glad you glad you made it hey denver morgan good to see you um so yeah i just wanted to go through talk to toshiba's a little bit more uh i actually have a different toshiba that you've been watching for a second and unfortunately this one is just like the other toshiba in one aspect for sure and that is that it needs a remote control to adjust anything and I don't have the remote for this one. Man, it's I wish I need to get a universal remote for this one because I really need to turn down the brightness. I was even trying to find a um, something like a Extron device to try to heap, keep this, the brightness down. I didn't really want to manipulate the image too much on like filters for uh, encoding for the live stream. So well, I'll try to improve it more and more each time, but we're just stuck with this on this certain level of brightness on this Toshiba. Uh, but the good thing is this one will switch inputs. It's kind of another oddball Toshiba. Toshiba has a lot of oddball CRTs, I noticed. Just weird ones. Uh, this one, for example, has a built-in DVD player. And the only input on the back is RF. And then there's a digital audio out for some reason. And that's it, coaxial digital audio out. And then on the front, it has one input for stereo audio and uh, composite video. And then a little headphone jack right down in here. And then there are quite a bit of buttons on there, but none of those are the menu buttons. And Solda, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say that. Hear me? Maybe Guillermo uh, Solda said, try pressing up and down the same time on the volume. We'll try that in a second here. Let's do that. So, uh, but anyway, these, there, there's no like menu button on the front there. It's all like up and down for channel, volume, and then some skip controls for the DVD player. Uh, so this just, again, a weird one. I really like the tube. It's curved. Uh, I'll get you the model number here. Okay. It says it's the MD13P1 from 2004. So let's try... That trick, maybe that'll do it. Let's press up and down on volume at the same time, and maybe maybe that'll work. I know, unfortunately. It's, it's, uh, that kind of trick works. Like, it's weird. These, these TVs are so random. Uh, the Toshiba ones, I've got a bunch of remotes for Toshiba's TVs that are other ones that I have, and none of them will work with this TV. They don't actually work with each other's kind of like Sony's used to. So anyway, this little Toshiba is from the same time period, uh, but it is not the same level of, uh, Monitor 
television. It's got lower inputs and uh, same same kind of deal. I do not know. I have not even opened this particular one up ever to see if there's actually uh, lead-free solder on that board. But um, I just wanted to show you kind of an example of another one and just have it let it run there. And what I'm really going to do is go over a couple of things about the last video because I kind of... I kind of expected a little bit of this to happen, but there was all, uh, quite a few comments and people that wrote me actually, uh, basically defending the Toshiba 24 AF45 and not liking um, the grade that I gave the television set. And that was on the last video, obviously. So, uh, I thought I'd just talk about the grading a little bit more and why it ultimately fell so low. Um, unfortunately, that monitor, I keep calling it a monitor. It's not a monitor. It's simply a, uh, it's simply a, a, a consumer CRT television. But that particular model, um, the biggest flaw for it is the lead-free components. And uh, so... That's that's really the problem with the grade for it. And I, I was talking a little bit more to Lewis about this. And that's Zez. It's Zez Retro. And um, we, were, we were discussing this on Cathode Ray podcast that we just recorded for next week. And there's, um, you know, these, this lead-free solder on these boards, it, it makes a terrible... A terrible starting point for the CRT, and that's just kind of disappointing. So, if you're actually looking for a flat screen, you know that should be something you're considering. Is the fact that you're going to deal with lead-free solder on that AF board and that model? Um, now, I did get the questions that we're going to go through here that I didn't talk about in there about like other sets and things. Uh, but the reason that grade started off so low, which I gave it a C minus, and you can go back and watch the video if you haven't already, um, and see why I explained it there in the video is literally because of that lead free solder for the most part. And then, uh, also, uh, the, the, the uh, picture quality wasn't great, but at the same time, I, you know, people were upset that it had an issue with it and I graded it still. I mean, that's one of the first comments here that we'll look at. But at the end of the day, the most this CRT could have ever gotten as far as a grade for me would have been a C plus, almost a B minus, just because of the lead free solder on the board. And again, you might say, Steve, why is that the case? Why would you put such a uh, big emphasis on that? And the simple reason is because of, again, durability. Lead-free solder will not last as long as leaded solder. And I, I wish I didn't have to use lead in lead-free solder. So that if you, you the chemistry, I'm not, I'm not like a brilliant person who knows a lot about chemistry, unfortunately. Uh, so I can't give you all the exact reasonings behind the composition of solder and why you need a little bit of lead in it. But you just do for durability purposes. If we um, if we look up what the internet has to say, we can find all kinds of things where it's going to tell us that lead in solder is going to prevent oxidation from happening, and um, for the most part, what happens is the solder just breaks down quicker. And, and over time, it'll break down and then it can have cold solder joints. And when that happens, you'll have all kinds of problems. And I got a lot of you guys in the comments are talking about it. Yeah. And so when a company uses that lead free solder, yeah, it might have been a selling point that, hey, we're. In 2005, when that TV was new, maybe they were like, we're going to be green. We're Toshiba green. And we're not going to use lead in the production of this particular CRT. And we're going to go all lead free. And it doesn't really matter because they weren't planning on those TVs lasting 10 years. So 
when we get to the point where we're at 20 years of lifespan on these TVs, sure, my unit that I reviewed may have been a more extreme case, but I, I, I heard, I'm going to have a hard time feeling that like in five years from now, people are going to be telling me I was wrong and that this leaded, lead-free solder board is an actual good design and it's, you know, I was completely wrong. If I am, I'm willing to admit it, but I do know that people who use solder in military applications have told me before that when they do that, they do um, have to use lead in their solder to uh, actually do any kind of uh, project for the military. Okay. So guys, I'm going to run here through here and we're going to, um, we're going to go through some of these comments so I can kind of back up. Cause I know that the, we'll come across some that people were, uh, critical, which is fine. I'm being critical of this TV, uh, but I just want you to know it's all from a good place and good experience. And, uh, there's, there's another thing. And I explained this more in the podcast that I, I think things about CRTs look better than you might. And I know that other people, you know, again, it's the whole thing. Do you like curved glass or flat glass more? Me, I'm always going to prefer curved glass. So that's a kind of a bias I already have against flat glass tubes. And, and so I, I judge them harsher because I'm, I'd rather see the curve on the tube personally. That doesn't mean that's the right answer. You know, it means if you like it, you can, say, hey, I like the flat screen more, and I don't agree with Steve on that. No problem. All right, so John Vandalin, constructively, I would say that you can't really say it has downsized the models. A flyback is shot. It is just this one sample that has a problem. And, of course, he wanted to reiterate that the video was fun and good content. I would just call it deep dive. The one sample, not a review per se, which... It is a little bit difficult to say that. Um, and if it was something where I wouldn't have really given it a grade if it was something where it did not have that lead free solder. But I did, again, go in and look at other people's versions of this. They did have tubes that could go darker and the picture did look a lot better. But there's still always the trouble of having lead free solder on that board. That's not going to change anything. That's never going to change even if the parts are good. So, uh, yeah, I'm not going to make it a habit of saying that, you know, this is grading is all, you know, this is, again, subjective. It's all just for an individual set anyway. Um, I'm just going to go briefly through some of these. Sergio Osorio. Hey, Steve, I need help with the PVM repair. If I join... Patreon can ask you some questions there, and the answer is yes. That's exactly what Patreon is for. You get a direct DM to me, and you get access to a lot of other things. Uh, not just that, but you do get a DM to me to ask me any kind of questions you want to right away. Um, all right, Abe's Games and Skates. Oh, boy, those discharges were scary. And it will take place every time. Certainly one of the scariest repairs you've done, Mr. Retro Tech. I enjoyed the way you presented the sections. And lastly, the grading system was clear and concise. All right. So, yeah, that's kind of the way I felt about it. I'm glad that it, it was interpreted that way by some people. Uh, so I, I really enjoyed that. I mean, I'm just going to go through here. If I respond to you on the video, it might as well give you a heart. So a lot of people have this. I have a 24 AF 44. I use it for my Tate setup and love the thing. That's cool. Oh, Adventure Taco, you're here right there. That's funny. You just said it again in the live chat. That's awesome timing, huh? <laughs> Excuse me, guys. My voice sounds a little crackly. Uh, it is allergy season here. And the last 24 hours, it's really been um, pollinating my sinuses. All right, we've got McBanjo Mike. I got this exact set for free a few years ago or a few years back to use with my mister since my Sony didn't have component inputs. Mine has some geometry issues and reds are too strong, but maybe I can prove that now with access to the menu. You should be able to do that. Um, but again, saying it doesn't have the potential to look really great, 
I'm again, guys, you can make it look great. I mean, you can't make any of these normal, regular CRTs look like a PVM or something. You can get close though. So, um, again, I don't want, like, again, I still graded it kind of low, but I understand, you know, and, um, let's see what else we got here. Got, this was a neat watch from Jocelyn Joe. I have a 24 AFX 54 cinema series that I used for a while. And, uh, I found a KV 27 FS 100. I'm looking to hang on to the Toshiba as a back, as a backup. Uh, thanks. Yeah, I would, you know, it, this is a television that I said in the video, I wouldn't add it to my collection because it's 24 inches and I've got something to fit me in that, uh, in that format. But if that's something I wanted, oh guys, I just don't know what to say. Again, I'm just so harsh on this thing about the solder because Unfortunately, again, it's it's a difficult it's a difficult fix. High level stuff. Dave Blade Gun saying hey to Brutus, of course. Brutus is finally in the video. Now um someone was asking if I tried a different console, which was a good question. And yeah, I try a lot of um uh, different consoles, different inputs. Um, there's a lot of things, especially in a video. I tried to really tightly edit yesterday's video and it's, uh, by doing that, there was a lot of stuff that I chopped out that would have just been kind of redundant. I didn't, it was already a 20 plus minute video and I appreciate everybody watching as much as they did of it. Uh, you know, I didn't really want it to turn into a 45 minute video with a lot of redundancy. And again, it was a difficult monitor CRT to shoot anyway. Anytime you have, it's the same thing with the one we're trying to look at now. Sometimes you'll see the screen is just too bright on there and it makes the picture hard to even show on a camera at all. All right. So Samsung S10 asked if, um, wouldn't adjusting the G2 voltage on the flyback produce the same effect as increasing brightness and contrast? Or you could say it would possibly uh, produce the same effect. However, you are literally increasing voltage on the flyback when you do that. So by doing that, you're sending more voltage into the system and could cause a wear and tear to go down faster. Uh, even though you may be sending in the brightness, I don't know what the exact difference on that would be between cranking up one as the other. I will tell you that I did try that. It didn't make a difference. And the reason I left in the part about using the brightness and uh, contrast in the video was that's something that I could do with this problem outside of getting inside the CRT because you saw how many, how bad that discharge was on that tube. Um, I would not, I would prefer if people could make that kind of adjustment without opening their tube. I mean, that, who knows? What if there was a short and somehow you got shocked messing around back there? Could be possible, it feels like, with that set. All right, Let's see what's going on in the chat, guys. I uh, hope you're all doing well today. Again, we're just hanging out, doing some follow-up to yesterday's Toshiba video. Uh, I'm going to take a break here and see if there's anything. I mean, if you guys have any personal experiences you want to talk about on it, yeah. Okay, it's just some good good conversation going on. Hey, Mr. Suter, good to see you here. JT Suter in the house. PO17, thanks for coming. NDPX. Demo Kirby, good to see you too. Um, so the, the thing about the Toshiba 2, if you wanted to know, it had... 
Uh, in the sub menus, you could set the brightness and the sub brightness and sub contrast. You could set all that minimum and maximum levels also. Um, so if you wanted to, you could go in and I didn't really make that video to be an exact calibration demo or anything. It was more of a overview of it. Hey, Tony, thank you for the Tony Escobar. Thank you for the 499 super chat. Say so totally agree with your assessment and reasoning. Thank you. Um, I appreciate it. Okay. So yeah, it was, I mean, I don't want to like make people feel bad if they own it because I feel like if you own it and you like it, that's awesome. And I don't want you to throw it out after my review of it either, especially if yours works better than the one. I mean, I just worked on that one and I was talking with the owner who's try actually from my life in gaming. Some people asked about this TV. Is it the one from my life in gaming? Same model. It's literally the model that's, it belongs to try. So, um, I didn't want, I told him the same thing. Only I was trying to work through it and I thought it was dying. I wanted him to keep it and make sure that I could get it to where it was at least usable. And again, when I was showing you that video footage and stuff, it looked really harsh on your eyes in a darker room. But if you were in a really bright environment, it actually looked a lot better than it did. It's just, uh, I did get some footage in the, throughout the video of a more bright environment. All right, let's see. Oh, I got some other people here about cab. Thank you. Just said they wanted to say thank you for the videos. Great source of knowledge. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. And um, so that's that's just a little bit more thoughts on that. I do. Let's roll through some more of these things. There's some good good stuff here. Toshibas are really popular in Brazil in the early 2000s. They have an aggressive marketing campaign focus on reliability and unprecedented five-year warranty. Thanks to that, people actually believe Toshibas to be more reliable than even other brands. I'm just summarizing this a little bit. As you clearly see, far from being reliable, it's the brands I mentioned above. But it's an oddity that it happened here and and made Toshiba's uh, extremely common here. Well, wow, that's actually a pretty cool story. I like the, thank you for this. Shuga Gren, I think it's Shuga Garen, uh, a 32 inch wide flat CRT from Philco. Sadly, it's not HD. Uh, it looked like the tube was from Samsung and didn't have a lot of results. That's a cool thing about, I've actually seen some Philco things. Uh, not, not very common anymore. Um, it's really, really fun. Hey, Jim, hey, James Boone. Thanks for coming. Show Dario Novella. Thank you. Pixage and Pixels, everybody. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Um, my Life in Gaming, they've been my friends for a long time, man. They were really great to me. Some of the first people to ever reach out to me were Corey and Try, and then also... Um, of course, Bob, without, you know, their help and me, they, they introduced me to so many people. I can't be thankful enough to them. So I'm always glad to help them out and work on their stuff. All right. Red 91. This is my daily driver CT CRT these days. I actually have a second one with under 500 hours put away as well. Whoops. Sorry. <laughs> uh, let's see. Fantastic set. Awesome video. Yes. Okay. So I'm glad. Awesome that I tried to make this video enjoyable, even though the fact that the grade might be harsh to some people on the set. Uh, Michael Mitchell, all CRT is dangerous, is dangerous if not treated with respect. Uh, I don't get this video. <laughs> Just replace the flyback and you're good. You can take them apart, but it's hard. I mean, there's nowhere, there's nowhere I'm going to find this replacement flyback. But I appreciate, uh, you know, you writing that long type thing. But it is true that CRTs are dangerous, and obviously, um, you shouldn't do it if you're not willing to take on that danger and be 
shocked or, you know, be prepared. That's what I always tell people. Just be prepared to be shocked. And then you're more surprised when you don't get shocked, right? <laughs> Bob is great also. Yes, I love Bob. Actually, I wrote an article for this CRT. If you haven't seen that, it's over on Retro RGB. An article to go with this video. Article is more focused on the secrets of the TET. Like the, that's what we could talk about for a second. The two ways to get into the menus and also the stupid velocity modulation. Yep. Oh, yeah. Just happen to have a Toshiba lead free solder flyback hanging around that's still good. <laughs> right, Belmont? <laughs> hey, Basil. Um, Basil was asking about the FW 900. I did not, but I have another. So here's the thing. I have another, uh, FW 900 coming in the shop, supposedly in two weeks time. This one works and is being serviced. So that should be a good example for me to make a great video with. Also, I have three quarters of the parts I need to make a connection um, device that I can use with my CRT tube tester. And then I can verify whether or not that D24, I'm sorry, the FW900 tube is good or bad. Because if it's a bad tube, there's nothing I can do about it. But if it's a good tube, I can do a lot with that. Uh, so we'll find that out. I have to make this um, I have to make this adapter for my tester and, uh, yeah, it's the HP one. Hey, body below biscuit butter. Thank you for the four ninety nine super chat. I appreciate it. Occasionally random vertical jumpiness on a 32, a 60. Know these, know if these use lead free solder, doesn't matter if the tomb is warmed up or not. So, um, that, it, you know, that could be anything from, what we talk about today as being solder, even if it's not lead free, there can still be times when a IC, the like a vertical IC, that could be causing that issue, uh, like a transistor, and those get so hot that those would be one of the first type of par parts that would have a problem. I do not know for sure that the A60, that's a different line. Um, I don't know whether that uses the lead free solder also there's a very good possibility it doesn't uh so that that to me it could be that i see it could also be deflection capacitors in your vertical deflection block causing that uh but that's that's so that's what i would first check out and when you open that set you'll see if there's lead free it's written on the board it'll say pb which is the um what are the the periodic element class classification for <laughs> i can't think right for lead all right demo kirby asked did i see the scratch chip repair of glass method from gadget uk 164 i did see that little clip that was awesome um have you tried it has anybody tried it i haven't yet tried it i did want to eventually try it if you go over to his channel he's got a nice video showing what he did and uh looks like he got good results bob and i were talking about that when he released the video very cool stuff um hopefully if that's a real solution that's one thing I'd really like to try out is that. And I also still need to try work and work through uh, what Andy King and John Linneman did. And that's put a darker overlay on a CRT. I'm just not sure of the right one yet. There was recently, you know, there's recently a 14 L5 that was sold on eBay for $600 shipped, but it had a big gash in the overlay. That would have been a perfect one to try to re do a new overlay on top of if you remove it and uh let's see thank you steve and i enjoyed this tv about seven years without an issue never 
worked on a CRT and didn't want the extra hazards of discharging it. That, sorry, that guy's, that comment right there is infinity. And that's a very good point. If you, do, again, if you don't need to get inside this television, uh, I don't want you to get inside this television while it's running. I don't care. Now, I, I don't think there's a problem if you want to get in there and remove that velocity modulator because I think that makes makes it look bad. I think that this set I have here may have velocity modulator, but I need to actually service it to find that out. Uh, but yeah, stay safe out there. All right. Would I review a super flat from Panasonic G A O O series? Um, I'd love to. So here's, here's a brief idea of what I had about a way to get some more CRT reviews without actually having to have the CRTs here that are huge. And I was thinking, what about one of the conventions that I go to, uh, the one in Tennessee, if I had, I probably have a good opportunity to set things up there where I could take the, uh, I could take the CRTs that are actually at the show and I could bring them to a private room. <laughs> Sounds dirty. <laughs> could take the little CRT and charm, charm the CRT a little bit and buy it a couple capacitors and, uh, invite it back to the private room where I can, videotape it <laughs> take the clothes off take the shell off get inside and look at the undercarriage this is weird sounding but i thought that while i was on location uh those those shows have about 50 crts on average and i was why these are things i would these are crts i'd never see anywhere else and i'm like man if i just took this out while no one's using it slow time on the first day of the show and set it in the room and spend an hour videotaping it, open it up, do one a little bit. I wouldn't ever do any full servicing, but I would take it apart. We could look at the boards. Um, so yeah, me too. I'm trying to figure out a good joke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Definitely getting a little weird there, fellas. Sorry about that. And uh, so that's, that's one uh, one idea I came up with that I think that would be really good. Because one, one of the things I did last year was I went out to Texas. And when I was there, I was able to review that 40-inch CRT, which I've never seen again. Oh, I Basil, I did not ever get to review that HTM 1990R. I'm sorry, I did get to do a little work on one, but it was so backed up at that time. I had to actually, um, I had to actually just send that back to the customer before I could actually do the, um, review on it or anything. And I have not done like in-depth reviews like this one. I mean, most of the time they were much shorter, less detailed, not not a concise video. Of, I'm gonna just keep. Yeah, it was it was nothing that you could lift. You could go back and watch. It's one of the if you go click on like my channel, click up videos. It'll be the most second most popular one on the channel. Um, it's a shows the forty. It's very short. It shows the forty inch CRT. There was two of them, and they're now at a game shop. In the museum lent them to a game shop in uh, Austin. No, Houston. Sorry, not Austin. Houston, Texas. Um, there's a retro video game store with a video wall now. And the biggest part of the video wall is the 240 inches. Uh, so there's, the problem with those was keeping the purity straight on them, though. Anything would cause the magnetism to go wonky, and you'd get a big purple splotch on the screen. All right, my Mickey Mikey B 86 said he had the 27-inch version of this. He was underwhelmed. 
The speaker was pretty poor. Um, it said that, yeah, here, this, this would be a hard, I'm just summarizing a little bit of what he's saying, but it's kind of, it is kind of a hard sell on this CRT to sell it as a good one when it has, if it didn't have component, man, it would be a really, you know, it would be really low grade. Like if it didn't have component, imagine if it was just composite only and there's a flat screen like that. I mean, you would, I'm not saying you'd get rid of it, but. It wouldn't be something you'd ever be looking for. Poor console kits. Says he needs a new TV. <laughs> Looks behind his TV. Breaks his heart. I, he don't need a new TV. Justin, until that puppy dies, okay? I got the 32A43. and was wondering if the VM Edge enhancement is there or not and how to turn it off that's something we're going to find out t gamer 91 i'm not sure about that but i have that tv and that's actually one of my favorite toshibas is the turn 32 a43 i got that my mom bought it new in the early 2000s and i've kept it and it's just awesome i love it one of my favorites for a consumer set so that's one of the things I like about the Toshiba stuff is uh, I've got this one, which we can rev I can review at some point and do a good review on that, as well as that other Toshiba 32A43, which is a great CRT. Like, I can't say that's as good as like a D-series or anything. Got component input, stereo audio, um, lots, lots of, and it's, it seems durable, but I'm going to have to open up and look at the circuit boards to confirm that mm. all right everybody thanks again we're gonna hang out a little bit longer been alive for about 40 minutes 1 30 is my local time so i have to be out of here in about um, an hour's time to to go pick up my daughter from school but uh, if you guys have any questions about the A45, let me know or anything. Um, I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a fun idea. I, I, what's, what's puzzling to me is what if you find, um, and this is one, one of the things I want to see, like, what if the day woo flat screen to CRTs, what are they like? Uh, what is that Samsung Super Slim really like? I've gotten close, short videos of them, but it would be so much better to get into the hardware and see what is actually going on in there. And the great thing about this Toshiba was I had a lot of time to actually go and research and find these cool extra things like the velocity modulation stuff, as well as the um, the two service menus and then um, one more thing I needed to mention, the actual hours counter is in like hexadecimal. It's not in straight hours. Um, oh, yeah. Sorry, guys. So look, uh, Phil Lines, I don't, man, if you send me DMs on Facebook or Instagram, I'm sorry. I'm just, those are the two social medias I never have any time for. And yeah, if you... Um, Honestly, most of that stuff is just you either have to catch it in live streams or question in live streams or um, can send them um, through Discord or Patreon or something or Twitter. That's the only thing I really use. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's, see, that's what I've heard. I've heard the there's the Samsung flats and stuff. I don't know. I've never messed with one like i've i've seen them at the shows uh i've also seen some some tvs that i like fell in love with uh my last time i was at the show there was this fisher tv the brand was fisher it was a beautiful shadow mask curved every angle tube just amazing i um i love I loved the look of this television. It was stereo audio, and I like I I was so excited to get there and film it this last year. 
Um, I, I started to think about this last year, how um, I just lost my train of thought there anyway. Sorry. But the, uh, I was re trying to read comments and stuff. But anyway, I wanted to try to do this where I wanted to film that Fisher TV. And I got there last year and it stopped working. It was dead. Like it was full on dead. And I was laughing saying I should have brought my tools so I could have fixed it for him. But I didn't have them there. Yeah, I feel, see, the thing is, is when you, yeah, it's like Fisher Price without the price. It was weird. And it was like a bird emblem, Matt D. Uh, do I have a favorite retro game? Pixing on Pixels asked. You know, I do have a couple favorite retro games. One of the favorite games that I have it's probably like Chrono's Trigger. I don't really play it that much anymore, but it's one of the last ones I actually went back and beat. Um, I just love working on the TVs more than playing the games, you know? I know it sounds crazy, but to me, that is the game now. And uh, I love them. Uncle Funk 999 was asking if I thought an Olympus OEV 203 at $800 is a good price. It's kind of like a box of worms there because um, it depends where you live. It depends what, if you can find anything else. I mean, that's a good monitor, but for $800, um, that would be kind of the high end for not, I mean, I'm not trying to say high end because they're, they'll definitely sell for more than that. But it depends. It's all condition dependent, you know? Um, so I don't think that's a bad price. $800. If it works good, looks good and you want it. And it, it that's a reliable monitor, but at the same time, um, you can get lucky sometimes if, and, and find them recycling places, but 20 inches are hard to find. So I can't, I can't fault anybody for paying that, uh, it's really hard for me to find them and, and, and service them and offer them ever for sale. I can't, I mean, it's been a long time since I've had twenties come in the shop that were from any kind of load I bought. Yeah. The two forty P test suite is the best game race. Aroni. That is the only game that matters. PS two look better on a CRT, man. That's a hard one. So you got to have a good TV that looks good in 480i because the vast majority of your games are going to be in 480i. However, I still think 480i looks better on a CRT personally. So I would say yes. Uh, now, if you go to anything above that, it will still look better on a CRT. Yes, but it needs to be a progressive CRT of some sort. So you're going to have to use some kind of Scalar device, like I recommend a GBSC all-in-one AIO uh, device connected that to a cheap VGA monitor. If you wanted the cheapest experience, you could obviously go up from there and use a better equipment than that, like a retro tank too, if you'd like to. Just picked up a 203 here for 700 plus tax. Um, yeah, I... I bought one like for five fifty on a deal on eBay a couple weeks, months ago, and it just showed up in a hundred pieces, which I kind of knew was going to happen. <laughs> so, uh, if I see them for that price, five hundred bucks, I would buy it if it was in my area all day, and. If I really needed it, I'd buy it for 800 if it was clean, if it was in good shape. And I needed it, yes. And again, I don't think that's unfair for somebody. Hey, Dell, good to see you, man. So, Dell, I'm about to uh, finally go in and finish rebuilding that CRT tube tester. I got all the parts here for that. These change out the resistors on there with modern ones. And I also have about three quarters of the parts to build the universal adapter. So I want to do that and some streams coming up probably. Probably not going to be a real video about that. 
but it will be some stream material. And then and then we can add that to the artillery. A nice spruced up thing. All right. Mick Sterminator 3. I've got a 20 AF 43 and I people were saying to unplug that sharpening feature without discharging the anode cap. Good thing I haven't gone through with it. It looks pretty good as it is in my opinion. That's fine. Like I say, if you like it, there's no point in messing with it. I just didn't like it. Yeah, the B&K, Dell, it's the... Uh, oh, gosh. It's the earliest one you can use that's worth a darn. I can't remember the model number off the top of my head. It's before the 470. It's like the 467, I think. It's the one I did a video on before where I just reflowed all the solder and did some testing with it with a connection that I was able to put together from a neck board. Epos Vox, the man, the myth, the legend, said, yeah, I have an HD set from T Toshiba with a similar jitter problem. Going to try upping the brightness. I hope it works. Like I said, I hope it works. Anytime I hear that, if, if this any of these things can help save this problem for people, it's awesome. Jinji, you were able to pick up a KV20 FV12 for 100 bucks. It's a gem. Absolutely good stuff there. Oh, well, Duckman was asking what are the di the biggest differences is working on a CRT television versus a computer monitor. Generally, the computer monitor is going to have more shielding, more hardware inside, more voltage sometimes in some of the parts bigger capacitors, uh, generally a little bit more work um, than just the standard, uh, you know, sorry, television set. But then there can be some really complex television sets also. I think if you go back and check out, well, there's the two 13-inch the two Sonys that I worked on. They looked almost identical from the outside. They used the same shell uh, but one was an M10 and one was a TR28. And the TR28 had like twice as much hardware inside of it. Twice as much. So it was, um, it was kind of crazy to see how much more hardware there was in there. Have I ever seen a B&O, Basil asked. I have not. I'm going to have to go visit... My buddy John Lineman or Lewis or uh, heck, even Martin Heinfeld. I need to go drink a beer with him and pick through the wasteland of the B&O television. I really would love one of those things. Those things are the, some of the best looking CRTs I've ever seen in my life, at least from a perspective of marketing. Reminds me of the, I would, call, I would consider that marketing level and, and the feel of a B&O is like the Neo Geo of CRTs. Yeah, PC monitors do tend to have a lot more shielding, electron gun gaming. They tend to have a lot more shielding on them. Usually you open it up and it's all shielded, and then you take the shielding off, and then you get into a bunch of circuit boards, tons of circuit boards, generally have bigger power supplies, things like that. Demo, Kirby, what's the oldest CRT I have ever worked on? You know, I don't, I have one CRT that's like those solid state CRTs that I tried to work on, and it is a nightmare. It's like one of the old ones from early 80s. And it's got uh, circuit boards that don't make any sense, basically, hardly marked. <laughs> so I, I I couldn't really figure out what the heck was going on. I closed it back up. I think that earlier generation is just something I'm not, I'm not uh, keen on yet at all. You can go, there's a great channel of a, a, somebody who just works on just the older stuff too, named Shango uh, 66, and that those are all old sets, things that I'm just blown away by because I get into those sets and it looks wild. Um, so I would say 
Early 80s would definitely be the ones that I've actually restored. Probably 81 or something would be the earliest, I'd imagine. So let's see if there's anything else here. I might uh, hang out a little bit longer. Try and my Corey from My Life and Gaming has the brands of has these brands of CRTs. <laughs> see, I told you somebody somebody would even say that. It's funny. Well, funny you should say that because it is their CRT. Um, other people asking about other brands of CRTs. I've never even heard of. I may have heard of a Dura brand, but never really worked on one of those. Are you going to replace the flyback again? No, I don't have the flyback to replace it with. Okay, guys. So I don't, <laughs> I don't really see anything in here that's too crazy. And I got to quit accidentally hitting down votes on people's stuff. Oh, here was somebody. That's a good comment. Peterson Custom Baits, LLC. Honestly, I was excited to see this review and shocked at the results. I respect your knowledge and understanding of set at component level. Um, I hope you try another one in the future because these are thought of as some of the best-looking consumer sets in some circles. See, these are a lot of these kind of... Uh, a lot of these kind of comments, but I was not the only one who had blooming issues. Man. So, like I said, I'm, it doesn't hurt me. I love that people have opinions on this stuff. So, thanks. Thanks, everybody, to uh, for just doing all that, you know. It's like, it's it's fun to me to see so many people actually interested in this set and other sets and everything all right guys so let's uh let's call this one a day I'm, I'm gonna try to come back and stream with all of you later this week i do not know exactly when but uh maybe friday maybe sooner than that we'll see um i hope all of you have a great week and um i will definitely see you Next time, I there's a lot more comments there, but I could sit here all day and go through them, and then I'll be in trouble because I'll forget my daughter <laughs> at school. But anyway, thanks again, everybody. I really appreciate all the feedback on the videos, and uh, I'll see you all in the next stream.